Hello everybody, what's happening? My name is William and today we're talking about minimum spanning trees and in particular we're talking about Prim's algorithm and how it is used to find minimum spanning trees. So what is a minimum spanning tree? On a weighted graph, a minimum spanning tree or just MST for short is a tree which spans the whole graph, connecting all nodes together while minimizing the total edge cost. It's important to note that your spanning tree cannot contain cycles, otherwise it's not a tree. Here's a weighted graph with nodes labeled 0 through 6 with various edges of different costs. One possible minimum spanning tree is the following edges, highlighted in green, whose edge costs sum to 9. There's no way to connect all the nodes together and get a lower cost than this. Note that even though the minimum spanning tree in this graph is unique, in general it's possible for a graph to have multiple MSTs of equal costs. All right, hopefully you've been paying attention because now it's your turn. I'm going to present to you some weighted graphs and your job is to identify any possible minimum spanning tree you can find. Let's begin with this graph. Take a moment, pause the video and find any minimum spanning tree you can. So one possible minimum spanning tree is the following with a cost of 14. Again, minimum spanning trees are not unique, so there could be another valid minimum spanning tree here, but they'll all have a cost of 14. Let's do another one. Can you find a minimum spanning tree here? I'll give you a moment. Here's one possible answer with the minimum spanning tree highlighted in green with a cost of 39. All right, one last graph, I promise. This one is a bit of a trick question because there is no minimum spanning tree. All the nodes must be connected on a single component for a spanning tree to exist. Let's change focus and start talking about Prim's algorithm. Prim's is one of my favorite minimum spanning tree algorithms because of how simple and how intuitive it is. By nature, it's a greedy algorithm which always selects the next best edge and adds it to the minimum spanning tree, so it works very well on dense graphs which have a lot of edges. However, a few downsides to Prim's is that it's not easily parallelizable, or at least not as parallelizable as other well-known minimum spanning tree algorithms, and it's slightly harder but not impossible to find the minimum spanning forest of a graph. There are two well-known versions of Prim's I want to discuss. The first is the common lazy version, which runs in big O of E log E, and then there's the improved eager version, which runs in big O of E log V, but requires a slightly different data structure. We're going to have a look at both, but this video is primarily going to focus on the lazy version. Let's start by looking at the lazy version, just because it's slightly easier to implement. Here's the general idea. Maintain a priority queue that sorts edges based on minimum edge cost. This priority queue is used to tell you which node to go to next and what edge was used to get there. Then the algorithm begins and we start on any starting node S and mark S as visited and iterate over all the edges of S and add them to the priority queue. From this point on, while the priority queue is not empty and a minimum spanning tree has not been formed, DQ the next best edge from the priority queue. If the DQ'd edge is not outdated, which it could be if we visit the node that edge points to via another path before getting to the edge we just pulled, then we want to mark the current node as visited and add the selected edge to the priority queue. If you selected a stale outdated edge, then you can simply pull again. Then repeat the process of iterating over the current node's edges, adding them to the priority queue, and while doing all this, Take care not to add edges which already point to visited nodes. This will reduce the number of outdated edges in the priority queue. Let's have a look at an example. Suppose we have this weighted undirected graph 
and we want to find any minimum spanning tree. An important thing to keep in mind is that while the graph above represents an undirected graph, our internal adjacency list representation has each undirected edge stored as two directed edges. So the actual internal representation typically looks something like this, which is a lot easier to work with. Along with the graph, I will also be keeping track of the edges currently in the priority queue on the right. I will be representing edges as triplets containing the start node of the edge, the end node of the edge, and the edge cost. Lastly, I will be coloring nodes as either blue for unvisited, orange for visiting, or gray for visited. So let's begin prims on node zero. So iterate over all the outgoing edges and add them to the priority. The first edge we're going to add to the priority queue is the edge from zero to one with a cost of 10, then the edge from zero to two with a cost of one, and finally, the edge from zero to three with a cost of four. Now we look inside our priority queue and we pull the next most promising edge and add it to the minimum spanning tree. The edge from zero to two with a cost of one has the lowest value in the priority queue, so it gets added to the minimum spanning tree. This also means that the next node we process is node two. So next we iterate through all the edges of node two and add them to the priority queue. While iterating over the outgoing edges of node two, realize that we may encounter edges which point to already visited nodes. We do not want to add these to the priority queue because they are of no use. The reason we don't include edges which already point to visited nodes is that either they overlap with an edge already part of the minimum spanning tree, as is the case with the edge on the slide, or they would introduce a cycle in the minimum spanning tree if included, which is forbidden. So the next best edge in the priority queue is the edge from two to three with a cost of two. So it gets added to the minimum spanning tree. This also means that the next node we process is node three. The same process of adding edges to the priority queue and polling the smallest edge continues until the minimum spanning tree is complete. I'll let the animation play until something interesting happens. All right, notice that the next best edge we pull from the priority queue is an edge which already points to a visited node, node one. This means that the edge is outdated and stale because we found a cheaper path to node one so we can safely ignore this edge and pull again. The next edge is also stale, so let's keep pulling. So what happens when we have two edges with the same cost in the priority queue? Which one gets pulled first? In practice, this doesn't matter. So we can assume that edge 258 gets pulled first because it was added first. We can now stop prims because the minimum spanning tree is complete. We know the minimum spanning tree is complete because the number of edges in the tree is one less than the number of nodes in the graph. This is precisely the definition of a tree. If we collapse the graph back into the undirected edge view, it becomes clear which edges are included in the minimum spanning tree. To find the cost of the minimum spanning tree, simply sum up the cost of all the edges which were selected to be part of the minimum spanning tree, and this totals to 20.
Great, we now understand the gist of the lazy implementation of prims. Let's have a look at some pseudocode. Let me first define a few variables that we will need. First is n, the number of nodes in the graph. The variable pq represents the priority queue data structure. It stores the edge objects based on minimum edge cost. Again, each edge object consists of a start node, an end node, and an edge cost. Next is g, which represents the graph we're working with. G represents an adjacency list of weighted edges. In G, every undirected edge is represented as two directed edges. As a side note, if your graph is extremely dense, meaning it has numerous edges, you should probably prefer using an adjacency matrix instead of an adjacency list for efficiency and space gains. And lastly, a visited Boolean array of size n, which keeps track of whether node i has been visited or not. So on this slide is the whole algorithm for the lazy implementation of prims. Let's go over it one step at a time. The function takes one argument s, which is the start node index, and by default s is set to node 0. Then I define a few more variables that we'll need just inside this function. m is a constant representing the number of expected edges in the minimum spanning tree. Edge count is the number of edges we currently have included in the minimum spanning tree. This variable is to make sure that the tree spans the whole graph. MST cost tracks the total cost of the minimum spanning tree. And finally, MST edges is an array which holds edges which we have included in the minimum spanning tree. The first actual bit of logic we do is add all the outgoing edges from S to the priority queue with the add edges method. So let's look at this method and see what's going on in there. All right, here we are at the add edges function. The first thing I do is mark the current node as visited. Next, I iterate through all the outgoing edges of the current node. And if the destination node is unvisited, add the edge to the priority queue. So that's all this method does is it goes through all the edges of a node and adds them to the priority queue if appropriate. Once we've added the first set of edges to the priority queue, the algorithm really begins and we enter a while loop. While the priority queue is not empty and the minimum spanning tree is not complete, keep iterating. Then inside the loop, we pull the next best edge out of the priority queue and grab a reference to the destination node index. This is the node the edge is pointing at. This next line is very important. It's the logic that skips adding an edge to the priority queue if that edge points to an already visited node. Again, edges can become stale or outdated in the priority queue if the node they're pointing at becomes visited via another path. Next, actually add the edge to the minimum spanning tree by adding it to the MST edges array. And while adding the edge to the tree, also sum over the edge costs. The last thing we want to do is call the add edges method with the new current node. Recall that this will add all the outgoing edges pointing to unvisited nodes to the priority queue. And the very last thing is we make sure that we have actually found a minimum spanning tree that spans the entire graph and we return the edges along with the MST cost. And guys, that's all for the lazy implementation. In the next video, we'll be talking about the eager version of Prims and what optimizations we can do there. Thank you so much for watching. Implementation source code and slides can be found on GitHub at github.com slash slash algorithms. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos. Thank you.